Hello, good morning everybody. So, we were discussing uh, red processes. So, so far we have talked about, uh, you know, uh, like in, in uh, last couple of lectures, we have talked about this uh, catalyzed uh, reactions. And uh, in, in that uh, case, we discussed uh, this uh, acid base catalysis, then uh, we discussed uh, you know uh, general acid base, base catalysis, then specific acid base catalysis, then uh, enzyme you know when enzymes do uh, general uh, acid base catalysis we also talked about, then uh, covalent catalysis, then you know metal ion catalyzed reactions. So, and uh, there we talked about also uh, the, the mechanisms of uh, such uh, reactions. Now, uh, the most important point is that, uh, uh, that when we talk about this acid base catalysis, then uh, protons are involved. Now, uh, this proton means if you replace your uh, the proton which is involved in the reaction by a heavier atom like deuterium, <coughs> then what happens? So, that is a question. <coughs> so, we uh, are now to talk on uh, kinetic isotope effects. What is kinetic isotope effect? Now, so it is basically uh, effect of isotope isotopic substitution on rate of chemical reaction. So, uh, let us take uh, the example of uh, this uh, H 2 C H 2 D 2 case. Okay? So, let us look into uh, the chlorination of this, uh, this molecule. So, you know it can uh, do the reaction in uh, these two possible pathways. In one case, this hydrogen is replaced by chlorine. In another case, this uh, deuterium is replaced by chlorine. Okay? So, in one case HCl is generated, in the other case DCl is generated. So, you see that percentage of uh, this mixture means this mixture uh, this uh, reaction mixture is a basically a percentage of uh, different percentage i mean this this hydrogen i mean hydrogen is uh, replaced by chlorine to an extent of 89% and deuterium is replaced by chlorine to an extent of 11% so it's a huge difference you can see from the percentage yield of these two products so, what could be the possible reason why this is happening? As I was uh, uh, telling that when it is uh, the case of say acid base catalysis, hydrogen is involved. So, if you take uh, say in place of uh, uh, a simple acid by uh, a deuterated acid, then what will happen? So, these are the questions that uh, may come in our mind. So, that is why you know uh, here we, we are taking a simple chlorination reaction we see that uh, that uh, there is a difference in effectivity i mean difference in the extent of reaction so the difference in effectivity of ch and cd bond cleavage okay so it looks like that ch bond is easily cleaved than uh, the cd bond and that is the primary isotope effect because these bond this particular bond is involved in the chemical reaction. So, if you replace this hydrogen I mean this C H bond by a C D bond means here what happened you see that there is an enormous reduction in the percentage yield. Okay? So, this uh, isotopic substitution is uh, ha has been made directly onto the reaction center. Okay. So, why is, uh, why is there a, a difference in, in effectivity? So, uh, the background is the difference in bond strength caused by the difference in 
mass between hydrogen and deuterium. Difference in bond string does not necessarily mean that it is a, you know chemical uh, in, in chemical sense. It is basically uh, in terms of you know excitation. Okay, when we when you do some chemical reaction, it is uh, you know <coughs> as per the absolute reaction rate theory that you have to put your your reactant to the transition state, and in the transition state out of the many vibrational modes, one mode has been converted to translational mode, which is responsible for the rupture of the bond. So, that means, uh, <coughs> the bond which requires more of activation will probably, will probably you know do the reaction slow than compared to where you know uh, the uh, the bond requires you know lesser amount of activation energy <coughs> now the ground state i mean the the zero point energy for this particular bond i mean is it is given by half h nu that is half hc by lambda so uh, <coughs> 1 by lambda that is for your uh, frequency for your ch bond is 3000 centimeter inverse, you can get it from simply from IR spectra. If you take IR spectra of a, a deuterated sample and another uh, non deuterated means hydrogenated sample of, of, of a given molecule, where only difference is in the CH bond, a specific CH bond, then you will be finding that uh, this CH bond comes at a higher wave number than the carbon deuterium bond. Okay. And the zero point energy for C H is of the order of 18 kilo joule per mole compared to C D which is 13 kilo joule per mole. That means, if you, if you have an energy level diagram, so this is for your C D and say this is for your C H and suppose this is your, this is your transition state. So, what you need? You need to transfer this to here or maybe this to here. So, it requires more of activation. This is more compared to this one. Okay. Now, why, um, why is um, you know wave number is why the wave number for C H is more because you see that C H and C D this one is heavier compared to this one. So, that means, the reduced mass is more for deuterium than for hydrogen. So, if you if you consider the Hooke's law, then the frequency frequency is nu is equal to 1 by 2 pi root over k by m, where k is the force constant. So, if force constant is remaining same or if you think that uh, if you if you consider that there is no change in chemical bond strength, if you replace C H by a C D, I mean if you replace hydrogen by deuterium. Okay. So, only deciding factor is that uh, this is because of you know this is because of your difference in the mass of the concerned atom. So, therefore, its uh, frequency is less than this than, the, than this one. So, that explains why you know uh, E 0 for C H is more than for C D which is 13 kilo joule per mole. Now, uh, so it is the potential energy diagram if we look into that this is bond distance if you plot energy as a function of bond distance that is C d okay, C d bond distance then you will be seeing that it is the Morse type of potential. Okay. So, this dotted one is for C h and your the solid one is for C d and this is your dissociation continuum that is if you can excite or if you can put your ensemble of molecules from here to here then this corresponding this bonds the cd or ch bonds will be ruptured because this corresponds to you know free c and free hydrogen i mean free c means this this corresponds to rupture of this bond okay 
So, and this is called the dissociation energy for uh, CH and this is your dissociation energy for you know um, for your CD. And you see that is, it a, is not exactly at the at the bottom of your potential energy surface, it is a little above. This is because of the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So, <coughs> so observed uh, rate is equal to a into e to the power minus E a by R t. Okay. So, this is your this Arrhenius expression as I already have talked about maybe in uh, earlier lecture. So, in this case E a is d basically the dissociation energy. Okay. So, for uh, when it is it is the case of hydrogen then it is you know it is basically your 18 uh, kilo joule and x is basically a factor I mean it is a constant quantity that is x minus uh, this much this is also x minus uh, this much. So, therefore, uh, therefore you know k h by k d is the rate constant ratio for hydrogen and deuterium. Okay, hydrogen and deuterium, it comes out to be of the order of exponential to the power 5000 by R t which is of the order of 7.5. Okay. So, this, this is the amount of activation that is required that is this much, this is also the amount of activation. Okay. So, this is the maximum primary kinetic isotope effect that one can observe at 25 degree centigrade that is at room temperature. Okay. So, so why do we need to you know consider such a, such discussion that because the isotope effect can tell us something about the transition state okay. and for this we have to look at the stretching vibration of CH or CD bond. Okay. Now, consider uh, you know CH 3 HCl I mean a transition state of this short that is it is, a, it is basically methane part and it is a chlorine part and this is also a methane part and chlorine part. So, you, you know uh, uh, this is an anti symmetrical stretching vibration okay. And this is a symmetrical stretching vibration involvement of H d depends on the structure of the transition. Okay. Now, if this anti-symmetric stretching happens then H and C L will come close and C 3 will go away. Okay. So, that may lead to the chemical reaction. So, that is why isotope effect is very important that is study of isotope effect on, on uh, reaction. Is, is very important in order to elucidate the mechanism of uh, chemical reaction. I mean it gives us the idea about the transition state. Okay. So, symmetrical uh, stretching vibration involvement of H and or D depends on the structure of the transition state. So, H exactly if H exactly is at the middle point, okay, it is a symmetrical transition state. Okay. If it is you know close to methane I mean CH 3 it is the early transition state and if H is close to C L it is the it is called the late transition state. Okay. So, if this if it is a symmetrical transition state then kinetic isotope effect is max, maximum and if it is not in the middle isotope effect will be less. As I told you that maximum kinetic isotope effect you can expect at 25 degree centigrade is of the order of 7.5. So, here you can expect here you can expect about 7.5, but I mean k h by k d, but not in these two cases. You see that you know this is your reactant side, this is your product side. So, in the reactant side it is C H bond, product side it is H C L bond, because you know it is it is the reactant side and this is the product side. Okay. In the same way it is C H I mean C H 3 D is the reactant side and D C L is the product side. Okay. So, since we are starting from this side to that, that side, so therefore it is important that 
uh, I mean this much of difference if we can supply then the ensemble can be promoted from here to this top of the hill and then it will move on to the product side. So, you see that for your activation energy for, uh, for the case when it is CH bond it is less than it is than the, the case with CD. So, therefore, it requires more energy that means I mean if the activation energy is more therefore, the rate of reaction will be less. So, you can expect uh, you know a lot of uh, difference in the rate and also the rate constant. What about the early transition state? Early transition state means it resembles okay, very close to you know, you, know, you know starting point. So, you see <coughs> that it is it is activation energy and this is your transition state okay. and here this is the transition state. So, you see the activation energy is this much for your deuterium and this for your hydrogen. Okay. So, not much difference, not much difference we can <coughs> you know expect here, but here the difference is huge. So, whether it is early transition state or even if it is a late transition state. So, you know uh, in that case your transition state where you know this uh, product it, it, it is close to product. I mean you see that hydrogen and chlorine these are very close and this, this, this is you know lengthened. So, that means you see you see that here E H and uh, E D E A H activation energy for hydrogen and also activation energy for deuterium. So, this one is a little more than this one. So, in these two cases we can we can we can expect less than 7.5 that is you know uh, K H by K D is not exactly 7.5 because in this case it, it is you know uh, the transition state is not exactly symmetrically disposed. I mean hydrogen is not symmetrically disposed. Okay. So, these are the three situations one can think of with respect to CH 3 H C L reaction. Okay. So, rule of thumb, what is the rule of thumb? Rule of thumb is that if K H by K D is of the order uh, uh, is, is close to 4 to 7, then it is bond cleavage and it is it is nothing but the you know it is symmetrical transition state. Of course, perfectly symmetrical transition state will give rise to Kh by Kd close to 7. So, a range uh, from 4 to 7 corresponds to a symmetrical transition state. What about uh, other case uh, less than 4? So, Kh by Kd uh, is 1 to 4. If it is in between 1, it is from 1 to 4, then there is a bond cleavage, but it is an asymmetrical transition state as like this one. This is this is a symmetrical transition state, but this is not the symmetrical transition. These two are not the symmetrical transition state. It is either early or it is a late. Okay, or in that case, no real bond cleavage. It is called the secondary isotope effect. That is, that is you know at the reaction center, no bond cleavage, but uh, you may expect a difference in rate for hydrogen and for deuterium. So it is, it is called you know. Uh, a secondary kinetic isotope effect, not the primary one. As an example, we can have this one, uh, this molecule, which uh, uh, when reacting with base producing HB. Okay. Now, maximum isotope effect at symmetrical transition state. So, when pKa of the acid and pKa of HB, these two are close or identical. In that case, you will be expecting because in that case, if these two are same that means, the hydrogen will have the equal probability to be with this B or to be with the starting product. Okay. So, when P K A acid is equal to P K A H B, then we can expect this one. So, you see that P K A if, if you plot P K pKa for Hb you see that uh, and B is basically this one these these uh, you know H minus H2O HCO minus CH3CO minus so on. Then you can you, you will be seeing 
that it maximizes at 5. That means, when Hb, pK of Hb matches with that of acid, then it maximizes. So, that corresponds to a symmetrical transition state. Okay. So, uh, in that case you can expect uh, you know uh, this kinetic isotope effect that is Kh by Kd close to 7, but in all other cases it is less than because in other cases P k A acid is not equal to P k B of H B. So, it is a, it is an interesting observation and interesting you know conclusion. So, this is basically the rule of thumb that if you if you find K H by K D in between I mean 4 to 7 it is it is your uh, symmetry it corresponds to symmetrical transition state. Otherwise, if it is less than 4 in between 1 to 4, it must be unsymmetrical or maybe possibly it is not a direct isotope effect that is it is not a primary effect, but maybe it is a you know secondary kinetic isotope effect. Some more example that is C H 2 C into in presence of base because there are two cyanide groups. So, these this carbon I mean this hydrogen will be these two hydrogens will be very much acidic. So, in presence of a base this you know proton will be snatched okay. and if it is you know uh, deuterated base it is giving base d plus. So, it has here it is found that K H by K D is 6 that is close to close to 7 that means we can expect a you know symmetrical transition state. Okay. And, and the best option will be if P k A and P k B I mean these two P k A acid and P k A of H B these two match then, then possibly we are we are moving I mean we are approaching K H by K D equal to 7 <coughs> or maybe 7.5. Another example that is a that is a rapid equilibrium that is H 2 O giving rise to you know it is a ben, it is benzoic acid. So, benzoate and H 2 O plus. So, K 1 by K minus 1 that is acid I mean K A this acidity equilibrium it is 6 into 10 to the power minus 5 and if it is deuterium then it is K A is much less 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 about 3 times more for hydrogen. Okay. So, uh, you know uh, this forward direction possibly you know uh, this upper one that is the forward rate is more for this one compared to this forward rate okay. because the because this detachment of O d bond may be requires it, it is requiring more you know activation that is why this forward process forward process is a little you know less you know in, in rate wise. Okay. So, uh, isotope effect theory now, equ now equilibrium isotope effect although we are talking about kinetics on kinetics, but uh, let us look into equilibrium isotope effect you know uh, you know quickly. So, this is reaction 1 product 1. So, corresponding you know using statistical mechanical uh, concepts you know equilibrium constant can be written in terms of the partition functions. Okay. So, in terms of partition function we can write like this for your this is for E 0 product this is for your E 0 reactant in the same way for P 2 and R 2 where Q total is trans it is a combination of translation, rotation, vibrational and electronic and total energy electronic plus vibrational. Okay. Now, electronic inner electronic partition function is thought taken to be 1. So, therefore, total partition function Q is translation it is it is the product of translation, rotation and vibration. Okay. Now, the expression for Q rotation is this. Okay. 
rotational partition function. So, Q translation is this and Q vibration is this and you know E0 uh, vibration is given by uh, like uh, this expression 0 0.5 vibrational energy. Therefore, K1 by K2, K1 by K2 that is you know equilibrium constant for this one and this one that is K1 by K2 can be written in this way and also applying born oppenheimer approximation okay that electronic motion is much faster than your vibrational motion and vibrational motion is much faster than your rotational motion so in this way we can factorize the you know total wave function okay into the in, into into products so so from born oppenheimer approximation we can we can have this relation. So, substituting the respective expressions, substituting partition function, then vibrational 0 point energies to, to this k 1 by k 2, this one here, we can get three things. One is mass moment inertia part, another is 0 point energy term, another is excitation term. Okay? where u i is h nu i by k t ith vibrational you know quantum or ith mode is the i is the reactant l is the product index. So, therefore, k 1 by k 2 is the is basically your product of this mass moment inertia term, excitation term and 0 point energy term. Okay? and of course, some other numbers. Now, let us look into this uh, potential energy diagram for your C H and C D bond, I mean C D vibration, C H vibration and C D vibration. You see that for C D it is lower as I, as I told you, if you look into the Hooke's law expression, since deuterium is, is heavier compared to hydrogen. therefore. Uh, you know nu is equal to 1 by 2 pi root, two, 2 pi root over k by mu. Okay. So, mu is more means its corresponding frequency is less. So, 0 point energy is less comp less for deuterium than for hydrogen. So, there is a difference you see there is a difference between this dotted and the solid line. So, nu h is more than nu d if you look into this expression. It is more for deuterium, therefore, this number will be less provided k is same for C H and C D. Of course, the chemical characteristic and the strength of a chemical bond should not should not depend on the mass. Okay, it, it depends on the electronic environment, okay, outer electronic uh, outer electronic uh, configuration. Therefore, therefore, uh, you know, for C D, you know, V is equal to 0, it is less. It is, it is even, uh, even difference is more when we are in the first vibrational quantum for C H and C D. It is still more for vibrational quantum 2. Okay. So, this way this gap increases okay, because you know uh, because the mass is, is you know for hydrogen it is 1 and for deuterium it is 2. So, it is increasing difference is increasing. Now, come to kinetic isotope effect. Okay. So, again uh, let us uh, go for absolute uh, reaction rate theory. Uh, so, you see there is a transition state then transition state to product. It is also a second transition state to product. So, for the first one this k 1, this is k 1 corresponding rate is the transmission then k t by h into k 1 double dagger. It is, it is given by this expression k 2 it is given by this expression. So, this is this is your uh, in terms of absolute rate, rate constant k 1 and k 2. Okay. These are the corresponding partition functions. This is the new part that is k t by h that is the mode which is responsible for, for, for the rupture of the bond. So, that is one weak you know vibrational mode which is converted to translation. Okay. So, that is this. 
So, anyway, so k 1 and k 2 we have got the expression from you know uh, theory of reaction rates. So, k 1 and k 2 we have got the expression this is the this is your uh, equilibrium constant for the formation of the absolute I mean uh, activated complex that is your given by double dagger. Okay? This is your activated complex. Okay? Then it is your k 1 by k 2 you can write in terms of this that is mass uh, moment inertia excitation term and zero point energy term. So, this term uh, goes like this okay? because u i is h nu i by k t and your zero point energy term goes like this. Of course, we have to use the appropriate you know uh, one to end up uh, this double dagger term. Th this is your uh, i for uh, i for reactant side and l for your product side. Now, we have we have to have we have to make certain uh, assumptions approximations that kappa 1 is equal to kappa 2 is very close transmission part is very close. Okay. Also, m 2 and m 1 double dagger these are you know close to m 2 by a 1 that is that is the ratio of uh, of you know basically uh, this the, the mass which is differing I mean the hydrogen and deuterium and I 2 double dagger and i 1 double dagger may again be approximated to i 2 by i 1. For new i greater than 500 centimeter inverse okay, uh, e to the power minus u i is less than 0 0.8 at 25 degree centigrade and excitation term is of the order of and if this gives you excitation term of the order of unity. Okay. So, uh, so, I mean applying the absolute reaction rate theory we arrived at this expression, then we are making certain approximations and based on those approximations you know k 1 by k 2 is this sigma factor. Okay. So, it is the symmetry number and then it is the 0 point energy z p e. So, it depends on z p e. Okay. So, difference in z p e 0 point energy e 0 is half h nu and nu is 1 by 2 pi root over k by mu or f by mu and mu is m 1 m 2 by m 1 plus m 2. Okay. So, we have arrived at the expression for your kinetic isotope effect that k 1 by k 2 is related to your 0 point energy. Okay. So, 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 what we I, we are getting that uh, that isotopically heavier molecule has lower zero point energy as I already told you that for deuterium it is lower this one than then zero point energy is lower compared to your C H. And delta z p e between isotopic isomers increases as f increases that is frequency increases. Heavier isotopes accumulate in the state where binding is stronger. Okay. and light, lighter uh, isotopes accumulate where binding is weaker okay. and delta z p is greatest for hydrogen isotopes. Okay. These are the rules. Okay. So, that means isotopically heavier molecule has lower 0 point energy. Delta z p e between isotopic isomers increase as f increases. Heavier isotope accumulates in the state where binding is stronger lighter isotope accumulate where binding is weaker and also delta z p e difference in 0 point energy is greatest for hydrogen isotopes. So, simple model that uh, this is your reaction coordinate, this is your reactant side, this is your product side again using the similar uh, model that this is your reactant surface I mean potential energy curve this is a product potential energy curve and we are moving from this side to that side. Okay. So, reaction coordinate is in this direction. So, you see that this is your transition state. So, to go to the transition state you have to put you have to put more energy put in more energy compared to this hydrogen 
And as I told you in the earlier uh, slide that uh, heavier isotopes accumulate in the state where binding is stronger. Okay? So, you see heavier isotope is here than this one. So, that means it requires more activation compared to this lighter one. Okay. So, a lighter one means in order to reach uh, the transition state that is your CH or CD transition state. Okay. For CH it requires less, for CD it requires more because it is it is it's, it's zero point energy is less. That means, in order to activate this this C D, I mean in order to have greater oscillation because that bond has to be ruptured. That means, the oscillation this oscillation has to be huge. Okay. So, that is why that bond will be that particular bond will be ruptured. So, this oscillation it is a it is a you know large amplitude of, uh, uh, oscillation that will be converted to translation. Okay. But for heavier one what is happening? they are a little deep seated compared to the lighter one. So, in order to activate them you need to put in more amount of energy that means more of activation. So, more activation means this gap is more. So, as per Arrhenius theory this rate will be slower compared to this rate. Okay. So, all of reactant state delta Z P H D is lost in transition state. So, therefore, uh, delta Z P H and D is basically this one expression and K H by K D is basically e to the power minus delta Z P double dagger divided by K T. K T. And E 0 is half H C nu bar and delta E 0 H is this one and delta E 0 double dagger D is this one. Okay. And also this one they are they are located at the same point. Therefore, delta Z P E is basically basically E 0 D and E 0 H from in the reactant side. Okay. So, it is basically minus delta Z P E reactant side between H and D. That is the one I just told you that this is the difference. This is the difference that is this one. Okay. Because this particular one that is for C H and C D, this transition state is identical. Okay. <clears throat> so, K H by K D is equal to this like this one and E 0 E 0 R H is this E 0 R D is this. So, nu H is this one f by mu c h and f by mu c d. So, since mu c d is more than this one therefore, therefore you see you see it, it is calculated over here that mu c h is 0.92 a a mu and mu c d is 1.71 a a mu almost almost mu c d is almost twice you see 0.92 means it is 1.84 if you uh, if you double it. 1.84 and it is 1.71. So, almost double this mu C D is almost double that of mu C H. So, you see therefore, your this nu D nu D is uh, you know root 2 okay, 1 by root 2 it will have a factor of 1 by root 2. So, therefore, therefore, what we are getting that it is 1.36. Okay. This square root of this is 1.36. Okay. So, and for for uh, for hydrogen it is 3000 centimeter inverse and for deuterium it is 2200 centimeter inverse. Okay. So, again if we go back to this slide that that this is the deciding factor this mu is the real deciding factor and also this frequency this frequency i mean the uh, it is related to the bond strength that is force constant so if we think that force constant is remaining same then this is the factor 
which is responsible for the difference in, in the rate of reaction. Okay. So, that is why, that is why you know isotope effect means looking into isotope effect is of great importance while, uh, while discussing or while uh, you know while exploring some uh, reaction mechanism. Therefore, if we take some uh, concrete example that uh, for uh, you see for hydrogen nu bar is 3000 centimeter inverse and uh, deuterium it is 2200 centimeter inverse you know it is it is a huge difference 1.36 times okay it's a huge difference 1.36 into nu d will give you 3000 so you see that just one unit of increase of mass from hydrogen to deuterium has has shifted the wave number corresponding to uh, wave number corresponding to that particular vibration that is C H or C D vibration to enormously that is about 800 centimeter inverse. I mean it is 800 centimeter inverse. Okay. So, you change your mass I mean atoms mass by one unit and you will get about 800 centimeter inverse for hydrogen. Okay. Therefore, cage by K D okay, uh, you know H C uh, divided by K T if you if you do this then you will be finding that uh, how much you will be getting that it is 0 0.6, 0 0.9. Okay. You see here uh, divided by 2 that is why it is 400 showing to be 400. Just plug in this expression K H by K D is equal to e to the power uh, is equal to e to the power uh, e 0 h reactant side e 0 d reactant side divided by k t. Okay. So, it is the it is it is it is the Boltzmann factor. Okay. So, e to the power h c into nu h minus nu d divided by 2 k t because this because of this one half h c nu bar okay. because e 0 h is half h c nu bar and you can get this number from from uh, means you can if you consult any standard quantum chemistry textbook under uh, harmonic oscillator okay so uh, it is it is an exactly solvable model so if you if you consult any standard quantum mechanics or quantum chemistry text then you will be getting you will be finding that uh, it is half H c nu bar. Okay, it is the zero point energy. That is, even if you, if you, go to absolute zero temperature. Okay, the residual vibration will be this much. This will remain be there. Means, it will never, never stop vibrating. Even if you, go to absolute zero temperature. If it stops vibrating, then, it will violate, your, uh, uh, uncertainty relation. Therefore, your K H by K D is this. So, it is 6.9 and if you take some concrete example that benzene with L 6 where L is H or D and if you uh, consider this reaction with H G 2 plus then, then uh, you can get K H by K D is equal to 6.75. So, almost close to 7. So, that means, it is a huge amount of you know isotope effect and since uh, these uh, you know in this case the reaction I mean this H G plus is is replacing this hydrogen. So, directly directly it is replacing this hydrogen or deuterium. Okay. So, in that case uh, that is why you are getting a high amount of uh, high amount of effect. Okay. So, so, what we have, uh, why do we need to you know study deuterium isotope effect, especially the primary kinetic isotope effect. Okay. Now, this is very important, because 
for the elucidation of your mechanism, whether your rate determining step is you know involving any hydrogen abstraction or hydrogen addition or it directly involves any hydrogen atom or not that we can predict ok. So, that means, uh, uh, you take a deuterated substance in one case and in another case you take a non deuterated I mean hydrogenated substance and, and find out you know study the kinetics of the reaction at a given say temperature. So, you, you keep the temperature fixed otherwise you would not be able to you would not be able to uh, you know um, get the idea whether if any difference is at all there is due to difference in temperature or not. Okay. So, that means, at a fixed temperature you study the kinetics in presence of a deuterated substance and in second case in presence of a of a of a hydrogenated substance. So, it will give you the idea, it will give you the indication that whether that particular uh, hydrogen which is now replaced with deuterium is involved in a, in a specific uh, you know step of the reaction. That is you can you can judge the mechanism of the reaction. Okay. Also, since the cleavage of hydrogen C H bond and cleavage of deuterium C D bond requires different amount of energy, that is the you know catchy point, that is the catchy point that we want to exploit that uh, information. Okay. That is whether that is doing something, that difference is doing something on the kinetics of the process. Okay. So, if we go back to the earlier slide that you know, you see that after a after doing these calculations, you know using um, absolute reaction rate theory, uh, if, if you do these numbers, you know I mean these expressions and you see that ultimately with, with certain approximations, we get this one that it indeed depends on this k 1 k 2, this, this ratio indeed depends on the 0 point energy that is the difference in 0 point energy of the concerned concerned uh, bond, it is very important. And uh, isotopically heavier molecule naturally will have uh, lower 0 point energy. Okay. And uh, also the heavier isotopes accumulate in the state where binding is strong, they will tend to tend to accumulate to the to the lower uh, portion okay, than the than the you know uh, heavier I mean lighter one. Okay. So, and, and, and the lighter one will, will accumulate towards the upper portion. Okay. So, that is why that is why uh, it is it is very interesting and it is very informative. Now, Hooke's law stretching frequency says that uh, nu bar is equal to 1 by 2 pi c root over it is your k by k or force constant by mu. Okay. So, that means, if you have a if you have a heavier mass then it's, it is it, it will oscillate slow. If you replace with a lighter mass it will oscillate, oscillate fast. So, that gives the difference that gives the difference means faster uh, oscillation means faster probability of rupture of this bond. I mean I mean more probability of rupture of this bond. If it oscillates slowly that means, it takes time kinetically it is it is a slow one. Okay. So, if it is doing very fast, if it is doing very fast then that means, it is it, it has got the more probability to get rupture, the bond has the more probability to get detached I mean the rupture of the bond, but if it is doing slowly then of course, it will do, but extent is less and that gives you the idea I mean, I mean it, it is very clear from your frequency number 
I mean wave number, it is 3000 for siege and 2200 for your deuterium. And E0 is half H nu, it is from, you, you can get it from quantum mechanics. E0 for CH is more than E0 for CD, okay. And uh, higher activation energy for CD, CD than for, uh, for, for hydrogen. So, cleavage of CH as I told you will be faster. So, it is, it is, it is, it is uh, really, you know, uh, very informative and interesting and you see that your, this is this red line, this is for hydrogen, blue line is for deuterium and this is your reaction side, this is your transition state side. Okay. So, that means to reach the transition state, this one will require less energy, this one will require more energy. So, therefore, we must uh, say one point uh, that uh, deuterium isotope effect that is you know primary kinetic isotope effect is indeed very useful in, in studying or in elucidating the reaction mechanism, especially the organic reactions where there is a lot of you know hydrogen rearrangement, I mean proton rearrangement or maybe hydrogen atom rearrangement, whether in the rate determining step this hydrogen is rearranged or not. So, that will give us the enormous information on, on, on the, on the, on the proposed you know or plausible mechanism. That is we, we propose a plausible mechanism and then we try to match with the experiment, other experimental results. So, in that case we can we can punch this information that uh, that is the deuterium isotope effect whether this isotope effect is there or not. So, that, that that will help to elucidate you know the mechanism. So, so it is it is basically your primary kinetic isotope effect. There is another kinetic isotope effect which is, which is called the secondary kinetic isotope effect. That in that case you know if you if you replace replace you know a hydrogen which is at a distant place from the reaction center and even if you get a, a, a K H by K D which is which is not exactly directly related to your reaction center that is called your, your secondary kinetic isotope effect. And in that case K H by K D is not it will not come to be very close to 7 it will be less maybe less than 4. Okay. So, with this we conclude the isotope effect. So, uh, so in our uh, next uh, piece of lecture, we will uh, talk on, we will continue to talk and we will talk on uh, uh, this fast kinetics, that is uh, the reactions which are, which are very fast, maybe diffusion control or maybe even, even you know, it, it is, it, it may be in the ultra fast time scale maybe in picosecond time scale, maybe in femtosecond time scale, maybe some photophysical processes, maybe some photochemical processes. So, we will take up all those issues from our uh, next uh, classes. Till then, have a nice time. Thank you.